In this video, I want to give you a few tips that you could use if you want to get straight A's in your next semester. So that you can apply this if you're going to high school or if you're going into college. These principles can still work. And some of the best things you need to do is you need to develop good study habits. You need to be disciplined. If you can be consistent, disciplined, and if you could develop good study habits, then those simple things can help you to get straight A's in your next semester. The first study habit that you should develop is studying ahead of time. If you do this, you're going to put yourself at an advantage. This is what I did when I was in college. When I took hard level classes like organic chemistry and physics, once I had the syllabus placed in front of me, I would study the material ahead of time. I would read the chapters and work out some example problems to help gain a good understanding of what it was I was learning. And so when I went to class, I understood what the teacher was saying. It made sense to me. And not only that, but because I was exposed to the material a second time, I gained a better understanding. I was able to see it from a different perspective. And that's what you want to do. If you could study the material ahead of time, you could develop a good understanding of it. And so when the test comes around, you don't have to cram. You're going to understand how to answer the questions, how to get the right answers. And if you develop this good study habit, it's going to help you not only for math and science courses, but maybe for English, for reading, for other courses as well, even other areas of life. Getting things done ahead of time will always place you at advantage. As they say, the early bird gets the worm, the late comer well. You get, you're going to have to cram if you study late. So study ahead of time. That's the first thing that I could recommend. Number two, the second study habit that you need to develop is doing your homework. You may not like this, but this is what you got to do if you want to get good grades, especially in hardcore classes. You just got to do the work. And you want to get it done early. You don't want to procrastinate. Once you receive your assignment, just go ahead and finish it. Because if you turn in your assignment late, Instead of getting an A, you might get a B, and that's going to lower your overall average. So the best thing you could do is just do your homework. And it's just part of the learning process. As you work out the problems, you're going to gain a better understanding of the material. If you don't do your homework, by the time the test comes around, and when you look at that, those questions on the test, whether it be free response, multiple choice, you could blink out. You'd be like, what? i never seen this before. That's because you didn't do your homework. So make sure you do your homework. And... Not just the homework that the teacher assigns you. Sometimes you may have to do homework problems at the end of the textbook. Because there are some teachers who really don't assign homework or they don't assign enough homework. And you can't always rely on your teacher to teach you the material. Sometimes you need to teach yourself the material because you have different levels of teachers. You have teachers who are okay and there are teachers who are very good. But in the end, if you can learn how to teach yourself, then you can learn anything. So always do your homework, even if you have to assign yourself certain homework problems so that you can get a good understanding of that chapter. So just get it done. The best way to learn is by doing. Let's say if you want to learn how to ride a bike, you're not going to learn by watching someone else ride it. Until you get on that bike, until you start riding it, that's how you're going to learn. And the same is true for doing your homework. You won't completely learn everything just by watching your teacher working out the problems. Until you sit down and do the problems yourself, then that's when you're going to start doing well in classes. That's when you're going to start acing your test. Because if you did the problems in your homework, when you see those same problems in a test, you're going to know how to do it because you've done it before. You can illustrate this to driving a car. You could watch someone else drive a car, but until you get behind the wheel, until you start driving, that's how you learn. I remember when I uh, first started driving, I really learned how to drive a car once I bought my first car. As soon as I had to take it back home, when it became mine, and I just drove it back, that's when I really, really learned how to drive a car. Even though I had some practice sessions before I owned a car, it wasn't the same until I actually owned it and I just drove it home. And from then, it, driving became a piece of cake for me. So you learn by doing and by taking action. So as you do your homework, you're going to learn the material, you're going to get a better understanding of it. So that's study habit number two, 
do your homework. So here's the third study habit that I recommend you start doing, and that is to visualize what exactly it is you're learning. And I'm going to use math as an example. Now, I don't know if you're good with math or not, but anytime you want to learn anything that's difficult, if you want to grasp uh, a difficult concept, if you want to understand it, try to visualize it. If you can create a mental picture of it, it can help you to understand it. So here's an example. Let's say if you want to multiply 20 times 13. Find the value of 20 times 13 without writing it down, without using the calculator. Do it in your head. Now for those of you who are not fond of math, this might be difficult. So I'm going to make it easier. Now close your eyes and mentally imagine if you have 13 $20 bills. So picture 13 $20 bills in your head. Do you see it? Now ask yourself, how much money do I have? You know that 5 20s is 100. So 10 20s represent 200. 3 20s is 60. So if you have 13 $20 bills, you have $260. And therefore, 20 times 13 is 260. Now when it comes to money, everyone understands it. Money is just, it's easier to deal with. And if you can relate math to money, multiplication can become easy. So here's another example. What is 25 times 7? What is the value of 7 quarters? If you can picture 7 quarters, how much money do you have? 7 quarters is a buck 75. So therefore, 7 times 25, or 25 times 7, is 175. And so, if you can visualize what you're learning, math can become easy. Chemistry, physics can become easy. Even history or language arts. In terms of history, if you can visualize history in the form of a story, if you can picture the characters back in time playing out those events, it can help you to remember what it is you're learning. I remember having a history course that was difficult. And then I had another history teacher who taught it in the form of a story. And he caused us to visualize what it is we're learning. And once we were able to create that mental picture of all the characters in history, then it made sense. History became easy to learn when it's taught in the form of a story. Because who doesn't like a good story? And so if you could visualize what it is you're learning, it can make the learning process a lot easier. So that's step number three. Visualize what you're learning. That's another good study habit that you want to acquire. Number four, review your notes consistently. Repetition is a useful memory aid. If you can review your notes on a consistent basis, this will help you to retain the information even after you've learned it. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Let's say if you're in Chapter 4. You want to take 5 or 10 minutes to review your old notes in chapter 2 and 3. Because in most courses, it's cumulative. The information in chapter 4 is going to be based on the stuff in chapters 2 and 3. So if you haven't studied 2 or 3 or if you forgot uh, what you learned in those chapters, you may be at a disadvantage when going into chapter 4 or 5. So you, you want to review your notes consistently. And now there's another advantage of doing this. Let's say at the end of the semester, the final exam comes around, and it's cumulative based on all 11 or 12 chapters in that semester. Now, if you haven't been doing this step, when that final exam comes, you're going to have to do those 24-hour power sessions, cramming 12 chapters of content in two or three days, or maybe within a week. And that's going to be stressful. You're going to lose a lot of sleep. You're going to be messed up. You're not going to be happy. But if you take a few minutes each week just to review your old notes consistently throughout the semester, when that final exam comes around, you don't have to cram. You don't have to even study for it because you remember all the stuff that you've learned. So you just got to walk in, take the test, pass it, get an A, and be done with the semester. You can go back to sleep, hang out with some friends, or do whatever it is you want to do after that exam. So review your notes consistently. Now, I do want to say that 
what works for me may or may not work for you. Maybe you're, you're not the type that wants to review your notes consistently. Maybe you love cramming. And cramming can work. There are some students who are very experienced at cramming. I remember in my old tutoring days, which I no longer work as a tutor, but I had this one student, and every time a test would come around, she would cram. And she was a master crammer. She was very, very good at it. I mean, I was impressed. She would study a day or two before the exam, do all the homework problems, and then when a test comes around, she would ace it. She would get an A. And she would pick up the material very well. She, I mean, she would develop and, I mean, she could learn quickly. She just, she was just very good at cramming. And when the final exam came around, I mean, it was a stressful week, but she would study 11, 12, 13 chapters, cram it in, and just ace the test. So some students are very good at cramming. So if, if that's your skill, if you're good at that, then you could do that if you want. But the disadvantage of cramming is that you forget what it is you're learning right after the test. And that's what happened to her. After she finished that exam, a day or two, she would forget everything that she learned. And then for the next test, she would study everything again. And then after the test, she would forget it. And so if you cram, you're going to have to keep doing it. And when the final exam comes around, you're going to be stressed out studying all those chapters. But you can avoid that stress if you review your notes consistently. If you ever go to a public university, if you go to the library during final exam week, it is something to see. The libraries are just packed, completely packed with students. I'm talking about every floor of the library. Students here, students there, on the couches, on the tables, on the floor studying. I mean, I've seen students with sleeping bags. And a lot of these students, they're just caffeine-fueled, bloodshot eyes, drinking those five-hour energy drinks. It's just a stressful time. Now, if you want to avoid that, you can just review your notes consistently. So when it's time to take the exam, you could just go in, uh, pass the test, and just be done with it if you retain the information that you've learned. And this step, number four, reviewing your old notes consistently will help you to retain that information. Now, this is the fifth area in which you want to take advantage of. If your teacher offers practice tests, make sure you do them because it will help you to do well on the real tests. Sometimes the practice test contains similar questions that are found in the actual exam. So if you could find practice tests, if you can ask your teacher for them, and if it's available, my recommendation, go ahead, knock it out, just do it, because it's going to help you to do well on your exam. Now, if your teacher offers extra credit, any extra credit worksheets that you need to complete, or if you need to attend some supplemental uh, session and get five points extra credit, take advantage of all of that, because overall, that's going to boost your grade, and you want to get an A in the class, so... Do the practice test, ask for extra credit, and just just do it. That's, that's all I can say. Just do it. The last area that, if possible, that you want to do is you want to help others to learn the material. So let's say if you're doing well or if you're doing okay, and there's another student in your class that may need help, if they ask you for help, uh, just help them out. Because if you can teach others the same subject material, it reinforces what you already know. And most teachers, they're good at teaching that subject because they've been teaching it for years. And when I became a tutor, when I started to tutor other students in chemistry and physics, my understanding of those topics increased dramatically. I understood it at a new level. I remember when I was tutoring years ago. Uh, I don't do it anymore. I'm done with that life. But when I used to tutor, I had this one student, and my rate was at that time was $30 an hour. And I was tutoring him in physics. And a lot of students, they had trouble with physics. And so I would show him how to solve certain homework problems. And what he would do is he would show other students in turn how to solve those homework problems. And by doing that, he was able to get an A. But not only that, he got a free tutoring session because each student that he showed how to do those homework problems with, you charge him 10 bucks. So he would help maybe 10 students, and he's paying me 30 bucks an hour, but he's making over 100 uh, tutoring those other students. And so this student was pretty clever. I mean, <laughs> he's definitely a smart cookie. But the fact that he was teaching others how to do physics after he himself learned it, that helped him to get an A in that class. 
because he was exposed to the same material multiple times. And remember, repetition is a good memory aid. So if you could study the material ahead of time, and when you listen to it in class, you're exposing yourself to that material a second time. And then when you do the homework and then help other people to do the homework as well, all of that exposure to that chapter, to that material, will help you to do well on the exam. And so those are my tips uh, for you. So just study the material ahead of time, review your old notes, do your homework, help others, and visualize what it is you're learning. If you could do all of those things, then you should be fine in your next uh, class. So thanks for watching this video, and have a good day.